What is going on guys? I'm Jack. And I'm Ollie. And welcome back to Project Race Car. And as always, we are back working on the R34 again. Uh, however, we're doing a slightly different video today. We are going to be going through the five worst things about earning an R34 GTT, which is obviously is, is what this car is, if you haven't seen it before, if this is your first time here. Um, we are doing some bits on the car today, but we're not really going to film it because it's not mega exciting, but just to keep you guys up to date with what's going on with the build. Um, the rocket engine... Cover, rocket cover gaskets, uh, exhaust manifold, intake manifold back on, uh, and uh, just generally buttoning it up ready for the turbo to go on. Yeah, so it's putting bits and pieces back on basically. This is what the engine bay looks like at the moment. So as you can see, most of it's sort of off still. Um, we put the uh, radiator in in the uh, last or uh, last week we were up here, didn't we? Um, so we've got a new Jap Speed black radiator in there now, which is pretty sweet. Cool packs are in, aren't they? And injectors. Yep. Uh, obviously the manifold's going on, but the um, yeah the injectors are all good to go. And the turbo is all ported now as well. Yes, we've just finished porting the turbo, haven't we? Well, you so... have. That's enough banging on about the car, guys. Let's get on with today's video. We're gonna go through the five worst things about owning an R34 GTT. Let's go. Okay, so, let's. Well, I'm joining in the conversation. It's gonna be led by Jack, because obviously, I don't own this car. Yeah, it is my car. Ollie's obviously got the Evo, um, if, you are, if you guys are new here. Um, so yeah, you can just about see it. We just about managed to get it in the frame. Um, obviously, this is my R34 GTT, if you guys are new. Um, we're gonna go through the top five worst things about owning this car. Um, let's kick it off with the obvious one. Um, <laughs> it's a pretty big one. It's a pretty big one, but it is probably the most obvious. It is not an R34 GTR, guys. Um, so that is probably my least favorite thing about owning it. Um, that it's a, that it's a, it's a GTT. GTT, not a GTR. It's a GTT. So the fact that it is a GTT doesn't particularly bother me, but what bothers me is when people who People who know obviously know, right? So people come up to you, go, oh, it's a GTT, and it's happy days. But a lot of people come up to you, go, oh my god, it's a GTR, and you go, well, no, it isn't. And then, and it's, then you, have to, you explain, have to explain it to people, and then it just goes, ah, oh. yeah. And, and it's, then you see the look, just like whoever's looking at it, they just instantly yeah. become like not so attract, like not so not so interested interested in it. <laughs> yeah. So there is there is that side of it, but obviously, as you guys know. Um, especially now in the last year, our thirty four GTR prices have just gone absolutely through the roof. Um, you know, ridiculous. Actually, um, actually ridiculous. Yeah. I think when I, I bought this just over a year ago, February last year, I bought this, um, and I think our 34 GTR prices then were 50 or 60k pounds. Yeah. Uh, they're like 90 to 120 now in the space of a year, so maybe even more depending on the way things are going at the moment. V spec tuner is 160 grand. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. So, so yeah, that's that's the that's the first biggest uh, biggest gripe I have with it. Um, Although, from my point of view, I'd argue that it doesn't really matter. No, it doesn't. That's if, as a car, it doesn't matter. Because if anything, a GTT with the same yeah. power as a GTR is going to be more fun than a GTR because it's only rear-wheel drive. Exactly. You've got that. You've so, got the rear-wheel drive aspect to it. And obviously, every, all the financial side of things that comes along, come along with it, you know, insurance um, and all that side of stuff as well. It's obviously cheaper to own this car, not necessarily much cheaper to maintain it, but I it's... Think, uh, I think it's lighter than a GTR too. Probably without the um, the Tesla, all the four wheel drive, drive stuff. Yeah. Um, so there, there is bonuses, obviously, to, to it not being a GTR, but that is definitely my first first gripe uh, with it. So moving on to the next point, guys. So um, it is a bit of a minor gripe of mine, um, but I've always had four cylinders. I think you have as well, haven't you? Um, going that, yeah. from a four cylinder to a six cylinder, and all of the uh, extra associated costs. That, that come with that obviously you've got two extra cylinders so if you want to do any you know if you want to force the engine or even just services and i know it's only minor but you know forged pistons and rods for extra two cylinders is you know a good few hundred quid you found more. It, you found it with injectors yeah i paid 500 for a set of four jack had well was quoted 750 quid for for, for, six. for six so so obviously it's it's fairly obvious when you when you think about it like that but it's not necessarily something you think of when you buy the car because you buy you these parent cars with your heart definitely more than your head oh yeah um and that's true of a lot of cars but in, in particular in, in particular you know r34 is their uh boyhood dreams for a lot of people and i feel very lucky to be, able to be able to own it and share it with you guys um but yeah you know just bear that in mind if you want to buy one <laughs> yeah if you're, if you're considering <laughs> buying one i mean if you're considering buying one with the way the prices are at the moment it's probably not going to make a huge massive, massive difference because they even these are shooting up in price as well um but if you do want one now is the time to do it before before they become like unattainable for everybody. Yeah. Or even um, just, you know, 
even where they get to the point where they're still attainable, but they're not really worth the cost anymore. That's the yeah. that's the biggest problem. That's that, yeah. that's what's happened to GTRs now. I mean, people are still buying them because they're crazy, but. They're it, not £150,000 cars. It baffles me that somebody you would know. pay £150,000 for a car that wasn't even 30 grand new. Yeah, but, you know, that's, so. that's that's what comes with the iconic status of these cars and, and you know, and, and everything that, that they're about. So, you know, it's it's, it's, it's definitely a cost that I'm, I'm willing to, to, to pay, um, you know, in terms of it being six-cylinder, you know, because in the grand scheme of things, yes, it's only a minor cost. Um, but, you know, it's something that is definitely... Uh, well, definitely something that I overlooked. Yeah. Because I, when I bought it, I wasn't, I didn't really have a plan to forge it, and now I'm thinking maybe I do want to forge it, but maybe I don't. I don't know. That's going to come in a later video, so we'll, uh, we'll obviously bring you guys along for for that discussion and that, uh, that you know, the plans we've got for the car. Because there is a discussion to be had about that. There in, is because the, the neos are so good. Whether so, whether we just yeah re refresh it and reuse the standard internals with new inter with new wear surfaces. Like new wear and tear parts, uh, or go completely forged. Um, but that's a discussion for another video. But stay tuned because that might be coming soon. Indeed. Right. Which leads us nicely on to the next point. It's rather big, it, isn't it, it? It is a bit of a boat. This car. Um, as some of you may know, I came from an Evo Eight uh, before this car, which not small, not small, but they're not big. But you know, it's a it's a, a normal size saloon car. Four door saloon. Yeah. You know, I'd say. Um, this is a you know a two door coupe that's probably fifty percent bigger than the bloody Evo. Yeah, it's and it's a lot heavier. It feels as well. heavy when you drive it. It's it's very boaty. It's very bouncy, and I know some of that's to do with the suspension setup, which is a sus suspension setup, which I know we're going to address again at some point. Um, but obviously things like with uh, my Evo was an Evo Eight MR FQ, um, so it had like aluminium panels and stuff. Um, so it was aluminium a lot, roof, aluminium, 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 aluminium front roof. wings, aluminium exactly. front bonnet, uh, so, aluminium bonnet, yeah. Exactly. So it was a lot lighter, um, and this will go on a diet at some point to try and compensate that. I don't think there's much in it, though. I think that's 1,600 kilos, and your Evo's 1,400 kilos. Yeah. I think there's only 200 kilos yeah. in it, but when you, like, certainly for me, passenger in it, mm. passing, passengering in it, the Evo feels really light and nimble and, on its, tall, and on, its, it? on its toes, and it's tight, and it feels like it's ready to play, whereas... Well, that drives like a typical GT car. It's a bit lazy. It's a bit yeah. big. It's a bit heavy. Yeah. Um, and we're hoping that the um, that's that's the whole reason of doing the turbo. Exactly. Is, that's, is, you to know, wake that's, it up a bit, and make it a bit more fun. Exactly. So obviously, um, we're putting a thirty seventy one R on it from Mamba. If, if you guys haven't followed along, um, you know that's gonna because it wasn't it wasn't particularly fast. No. And other than looks, the only other thing, obviously, apart from the fact that it's a GTT, the only other thing it had going for it was the noises it made. Like it yes. wasn't fast, was it? So that's the whole idea of you. Exactly. You know, it had this. a H H HKS SSUV on it, or it still has. Um, I just put a. Uh, I love the sound of that thing. <laughs> it does make. Fun, it's just it? such a fast and furious noise, isn't it? It is. I've just put um, a Terminator titanium exhaust on it not long before it came in here uh, for all the work we've been doing. So it does make excellent noises. You know, like I said, that's, that's one thing that does, that does definitely have going for it. Um, but it just needed that power to make it feel a bit more alive. Um, the coilovers, when we put the coilovers on, it <clears throat> it massively helped uh, with the the boatiness mm. straight off of the bat. But there's a hell of a lot of improvements. Uh, there. There's a hell of a lot of improvements to be made still yeah. uh, with the such like chassis braces, yeah. uh, poly bush, yeah. and things like that. Because it's, it's, control arms and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, like, camera arms and things. And so I think that's something we're going to address on the car because it does at some point. It does still feel quite boaty, yeah. but it was horrendous on the stock suspension. It was. Admittedly, that the rear shock were leaking quite badly. Yeah, which probably like no oil in which them. probably didn't help. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> so that's part of the reason they got replaced. Um, but yes, all of that sort of stuff obviously will be to come on the car as well. Um, so if you're looking at buying one or, you know, you're going to be getting one soon, uh, just be prepared that when you first drive it, that it will feel a bit heavy. Uh, and they, depending on how it's set up, obviously, it might come with coil And they it? feel slow as well. Stock turbo, they're like, don't, very don't, linear. Don't hype yourself up thinking, oh, it's going to be fast, oh, it's going to be fast. Yeah, if you've had like a 1.2 Micra, uh, not a 1.2, like a 1 litre Micra yeah. or like a 1.2 Corsa or something like that, Yes, that will feel f***ing way fast. But when you dabble with cars that we dabble with, and especially you coming from a 400 horsepower Evo 8, mm. 
you got in that and went, God, it feels slow. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they do. And I think that's because of the size and because of the weight of it. Yeah. Um, and it is, at the end of the day, it's, you know, stock, they're only 276 horsepower. So it's not that much, they don't really. Make especially, that much power especially, especially you know, yeah. when compared to modern cars. Yes, modern cars are very heavy. Um, but, you know, you get an RS3 or even an S3 or anything like that. Yeah, S, S3. You know, S3, S3 300 horsepower. Like. S3, a stage one map, will do 350. Yeah, exactly. So and that's you know, out of a little two litre aluminium block yeah. engine. And that's a 2.5 straight six cast iron block. Yeah. So the good thing that is has the, way more potential. I was going to say, but, the good thing is that will um, that will make power on the stock yeah. internal, which, which is good, obviously, and why we do the turbo. Um, but yeah, so just bear that in mind if you do want to buy one. Right. The penultimate point, um, the fact that it's an old car is definitely something that you, well, A, you've got to consider when you buy it, and B, it can be quite annoying, to be honest. Mm. Um, the thing, the thing with it for me, um, owning this car for a year or so, and it's not, it's not been that big of a problem yet, to be fair. Although I know it will be, uh, is the fact that obviously it's an old car, so there's things that are going to have to be replaced. There's parts that are going to have to be replaced that give me no enjoyment or benefit, but you still have to spend the money on them. Yep. And I know that's the case with all cars. You know, that's a, that's a running theme, or whatever. But with this car being twenty odd years old. Um, you know, there's there's things that, that are just going to have to be replaced. I don't know what it's going to be. Yeah. But you know, they they're not going to give me an extra ten horsepower or or make the car look any better. And another thing that comes under the fact that it is an old the fact that it, it is an old car is the problem that many of you will all have faced having owned Japanese cars, and that is we're not going to beat around the bush. Rust. Indeed. And. I'm going to admit that my car's rusty. My Evo's rusty underneath. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, not badly. Not badly, yeah. But we will find out when we strip the underseal off. Yeah. And this, this definitely is the needs, same kind of story. This needs so. some work. Um, and that, that's something we're going to try and address this winter because uh, I'll be honest, I um, didn't realise quite how bad it was when I bought the car. Um, but after some inspection, having stuff out of the engine bay, and we can see a lot more now. She's um, a little bit rustier than she we'd like. Needs a bit of treatment. Uh, so, so again, that's you know, if you guys want to see a, a fully in-depth video on that, let us know in the comments down below because we're going to be probably doing it over over this this coming winter. So we're going to put the car on the road for summer and enjoy it and do some shows and whatever. And, and then, then we'll look at getting a rotisserie and, and do it all uh, properly, rotating it over yeah. and dropping the entire lower suspension setup. Well, the entire everything that bolts to the bottom of the car. I can't speak. Everything that bolts to the bottom of the car, pull it all off, um, and then get all of the subframe components powder coated and shit like that. Um, and then bare metal the bottom of the car. Yeah. And then it will. We'll probably end up using Jota Max that we did on mine. Probably, yeah. Um, Good stuff. And fully rust treat it. So if you're interested in that, let us know. Let us know. And on to the probably the most annoying thing about well, only any Japanese car. But, so annoying. But in particular, um, well, Evos are probably maybe even worse actually, um, and that is. JDM slash Skyline slash Evo Tax, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's, but it, for those, those of you who don't know what that is, it is essentially the extra money that you pay for parts and shipping. and Just because just, it's come off of that type of car. Just because of the type of car that it's for. So I had this a lot when I had my Evo. Um, I'll give you an example on Skyline, actually, because it's a pretty good example. So um, you'll probably know the, the answer to the question I'm about to ask you. How Roughly how much is a rear wheel bearing for like, know, like a Peugeot 306 or whatever? Uh, I fitted a rear wheel bearing on a Citroen last week and the bearing was £8.20. Yeah. So I paid £111 for a rear, rear wheel bearing for an R34 GTT. And you paid eight, well, the customer paid £8 for a, for one on a Citroen. That is what we're talking about. Uh, that's what we mean it's when we're talking about bearing. When we're talking about Skyline yeah, Taxi. That, that, that's for one bearing. That's not a pair. That's one individual bearing for the, for the rear wheels. So. Those are the sorts of things, and that kind of goes back to the other point we were talking about of you know replacing parts that are old that have no you know you don't get any benefit out of them. Obviously, you know that needed to be replaced because it was making a horrendous noise at the time. That was just after I got the car, yeah. uh, so I knew that I knew that needed replacing anyway. Um, but I didn't quite realise how how expensive that was going to be. Um, and it, you know this is this is not just a, something that's unique to Skylines. It's it's any 
I wouldn't say any Japanese car, S- any iconic Japanese car. S14s, yeah. uh, S15s, you know, uh, cars, so yeah, just... all of the all of the popular Japanese imports. And and part of that, I think, is because you know a lot of quite a lot of your Civics now as well. All of yeah, that, all of that massively gone up. All the Skunk Two stuff's ridiculously mm. expensive. And obviously, it's, it's based on supply and demand somewhat, yeah. and and rarity. You know, the reason that markup is there for a lot of companies is because they don't sell. 5,000 wheel bearings a year, you know, they, whereas six, people who supply them for Citroens probably will. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's why that, that the markup is there because, you, you know, you've got a, a rare car, if you like. I know these aren't that rare, but in comparison to, you know, your everyday French hatchback, they are. Um, so, Especially down Peugeot's. Yes. <laughs> just, you, you can just sit there and run about Peugeot's, it's fine. <laughs> And no, no, no car guys like Peugeot, don't they? Oh, I hate them. So, but then again, you still have your dedicated follower groups. You do. There's yeah. a few that do like them. Yeah. Chrysler Crossfire. No. No. PT Cruiser. Oh, no, no, not PT Cruiser. All right, anyway. <laughs> anyway, we've got slightly sidetracked. Um, so, you know, that, and that's not just on wear and tear parts. Like, you've it's got performance it, parts it's as well. Performance parts. It? If you want to buy, you know, any cool, like, Japanese brands uh, of, of stuff, for, like, again, another example of the Skyline. I, um, I recently bought some HKS, uh, two HKS gauges. So uh, they're the same gauges that are in the uh, Fast and the Furious film that are in, uh, was it Too Fast, Too Furious? They're in Brian's, one of Brian's Skylines. Um, and they were, by the time I got them from Japan and got them shipped over, it was around about 350 quid for two gauges, uh, just because they're HKS pretty much. Uh, and it's mm. the same case for, you know, Greddy or anything like that. And you so. could have gone on to eBay and bought three in a bundle from Pro Sport yep. for 190 quid. Yep. So, you know. That's got... because if you want JDM quality parts, you've got to pay, you've got to pay the price for them. Exactly. Unfortunately. And, and that was something I definitely knew, you know, going into this car. And that was obviously something I picked up from the Evo. I learned the hard way that way, for sure. Um, but, but you know, it's something that I did know was going to be the case. Um, buying this car and it's something you just have to live with if you want cars like this you know so uh, i don't think it's uh as long as you know it's happening it's not too bad no you know it's know, what, know what you're getting yourself into before you get yourself into it yes exactly <laughs> that's probably the best way of putting it yeah yeah so yeah but i love the car and i'm really excited about what we're doing to it at the moment especially and you know can't wait to get the car back on the road um soon we're now. almost there soon now we're almost there uh, yeah. for both the cars. Actually, if you're not, if you know, if you're not up to date on Ollie's Evo as well, that's almost ready um, or almost ready to start at least. Anyway, yeah. And if you want to see uh, a video like this for Ollie's car, let us know down in the description below. Let us know down in the comments below. Yeah. Because you know they are slightly different. I know that a lot of the points will cross over, but if you if you're specifically interested in Evos um, or or you want to find out from an owner's perspective, five worst things about an Evo five. Oh, I don't know if I can think of any. He'll be able to think of something. <laughs> his, his bank balance will tell him. Yeah, 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 there we go. Yeah. Wow. Well, anyway, I think that's going to wrap it up, but we, we have got one bonus uh, thing, really, bonus I guess. Question, yeah. So, um, what's, what's the best reason for owning one of these cars? Well, just, just look at it, basically. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, slightly different style of video. If you did, again, let us know in the comments below and hit that like button as well because it lets us know that you're enjoying the content. Uh, it's a bit more of a, almost like a podcast really today, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So if you, if you, you know, if you, if you like this sort of content or you, you know, like this sort of style, if there's any other topic you want us to sit down and talk to, to, to talk about, uh, let us know. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. We'll catch you again in the next one. Cheers. Bye. Hello. Hello. Literally as we should. What the f- do you want? <laughs>